Hi there and welcome to the sixth module. Uh, this is the video where I present the readings to you and talk a little bit about them uh, in advance of you uh, doing the reading yourself and then and then going on to the quiz. So, uh, and, and doing the discussion as well. Um, I, I want to talk about the two readings today. The two, um, the two readings are about education and globalization. They're both sort of have something to say about education in the age of globalization. But they have two fairly different perspectives. One of the interesting questions to be asking yourself while you're reading each of them is, can these both be true? I suppose it'd be when you would be reading the second one, right? You'll have read the first one and then you'll be reading the second one and say, are these both true? Are they both, uh, are they on the same side or are they on opposing sides? Right? Because we certainly do have different perspectives. So one is more of a sort of a, uh, a Western perspective. Uh, the, the writer is sort of concerned with uh, Western Europe uh, primarily and, and the United States and, and, and its position in the world with regards to uh, the sort of the, the high, high skilled workers uh, and the education that they uh, receive. The other one is looking at it from the perspective of, uh, of, of, of the Islamic world uh, and the effects of sort of a perceived Western dominance uh, in education, right? And so, th so those two things, they certainly relate, right? They, they might be both sides of an argument, but, but actually I think you'll find when you read them both that they're not really disagreeing. Um, well, not on everything, they are actually probably disagreeing on some things, right? So, so watch for that. They both also sh share some commonalities in sort of the, 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 the warnings that they give, right? Um, and I think if I had to synthesize the two in, in, into one particular warning, uh, it would be this, something along the lines of like Western education doesn't afford the West the advantage that it thinks it does, perhaps. Okay, that might not be quite capturing the Islamic one yet, uh, but we're, we're getting fairly close maybe more at a more basic level, there's some sort of problem in the conception of Western education uh, or, or the conception of education in the West, perhaps, which, which is two slightly different things. So uh, that's my attempt to sort of synthesize on both uh, and see if you agree with me on that or not, uh, because this is my interpretation of these readings, of course. And you should, you know, I, ho I hope if you got anything from this class, one of the things that you've got uh, is a, an opportunity to uh, develop your own interpretations of these readings, right? To practice doing that, right? To having your own reading, uh, your in, again, your understanding, your interpretation, and and sort of uh, communicating that to other people, and that's what uh, I think you've been doing throughout the class, and so um, so hopefully that's that you feel like that's that skill is is being developed. <clears throat> so I, I want to talk a little bit about both of the papers in a little bit more detail. I think I've presented them. Uh, I've set, set up the scene, if you like. They're both talking about education, and, and particularly education under globalization, right? What's this new conception of education? Um, and one of it, again, is, is, is from the West, and one is from the Islamic world. And the one thing that is, is sort of suspicious of a Western education, or a globalized education, in that it seems to be allowing for a Western model of education uh, to, to, to permeate the world, right? And this is another, this is another, um, this is another thing that they probably agree on, right? Both of these papers probably agree that, that, that a particular kind of education, right, is permeating the world through globalization. So it's this idea again, right? Remember, you've already done a paper on this, some of you, uh, this was one of the options, I think, but you know, is globalization just Americanization? Right, and certainly the, the one that, that we see from, from the perspective that we get from the Islamic world in this week, in this one particular reading, is that, uh, is yes, <laughs> yes to that, right? And so you'll see some arguments as to why that, that seems to be the case from that particular, uh, uh, from, from Razak, right, from the particular author, um, and what that means, uh, and, and, and what the Islamic world should do in the face of that. Uh, from the other article, what you'll what you'll see from the uh, the Brown et al. article is what you'll see is some um, uh, uh, again sort of a warning that the, the Western education is something not quite right though though it's expanding. It's not going to afford because it's expanding. 
it's not going to afford the West the, the dominance that they might expect. All right, so this is probably a point of disagreement where the, 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 the one that we read from Razak says, no, actually, the Western education systems coming to dominate the world system, uh, dominate education systems all over the world. Um, and that's uh, a threat to, to other cultures. Um, and the, the one from the West is saying, no, no, um, actually, you know, this, this dominance of the, of the sort of Western academic higher education system in particular is leading to the downfall of the West, at least the, 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 the erosion of, the, of, of Western dominance. Uh, and so let's talk a little bit more about that that first paper. The idea here, right, is that uh, governments generally and, and uh, multinational corporations, transnational corporations, TNCs, have been sort of converging on this idea that we, that, that the way forward economically in, 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 in a globalized world is a highly skilled workforce. Government policy uh, and, and again, transnational corporations as part of that perhaps, and, and also as, in terms of what they want for their own companies, is it's a race for talent. Let's make as many university graduates as we can. Let's, let's have as many highly skilled, highly educated workers as possible in our country. And then obviously for a transnational corporation, let's hire the, the most uh, highly educated, the most uh, best trained uh, workers, because this is what's going to give us the competitive advantage in the world economy. And the argument goes something like this, right? That, 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 that as, as we become globalized, uh, we can't anymore really as a nation state uh, prevent competition. We can't. You know, the sort of principles of globalization. Um, not that we don't want to, right? Perhaps maybe we want to, but even if we do want to, we, we really can't uh, fight back against globalization. This is why some of these papers, I think, are a little bit old. They, they sound a little bit old fashioned, right? Because, of course, uh, some, some, uh, some political parties in Western Europe and in North America, some sections of the Republican Party, for example, with Donald Trump. Well, and even to some extent, I think, within the, the Democratic Party in the United States. You know, uh, and more and more advocating for that. Well, let's actually uh, draw back a little bit from glo from globalization, but but let's uh, let's put that aside, right, and go back a little bit, like go back ten years or something like that. Right. So so uh, this 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 paper sees it. Okay, governments can't fight globalization, right? They're, they're involved in this competition now. And. Uh, what's going to happen, right, is that the country is going to become differentiated, right? They're going to specialize as, as they always have done. They used to be specialized in particular products. Well, the specialization that it talks about a lot in this paper is this sort of distinction between what they call head countries and body countries, All right? So the, some countries are going to put the role of the head. What they mean by that is they're going to have uh, knowledge-based economies. Uh, they're going to do design, right? They're going to do uh, research, right? Research and design, research and development. Um, uh, that that's that sort of work, and that's the most lucrative form of work, right? That's the most lucrative type of work, you know. And also like the service industries as well, like legal services and accounting services and uh, IT uh, services, and that, all all that sort of thing, all the things, right? This is where the money is. Um, designing the systems, designing the products. Uh, designing the, the machinery and, and, the, and the technology that's going to uh, allow the body countries uh, to create uh, the products that we all need all over the world, the product and services perhaps as well that we all need elsewhere in the world. So, um, so in order to make sure that we maintain our status as, as, a, as a head country rather than a, rather than a body country, uh, we need to produce a lot of university graduates. And so you'll see um, I, I, I think I saw when I left the UK, I think we, uh, which was back in uh, when 2007, that recently a government, uh, the government had recently um, issued a target to have 50% of the workforce be university educated. Right? At that point, it was, I think, about 20%. Right? So it was a, a big uh, expansion right, of, of 
of higher education. And, and this was the reason, right, that the future is about highly educated, highly skilled uh, workforce. Um, and this article actually sees a problem with that, right, uh, with that whole conception of the world and uh, points out that problem. And that's really the, the sort of the argument of this uh, Brown et al. article, right, is that, look, um, we find that we do find a massive expansion of, of higher education and highly educated, highly skilled employees, people um, being produced in the West. But, but actually there's more, more university graduates coming out of Chinese universities now. And so to think that this gives the, the West any sort of competitive advantage is actually a mistake. And, 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 and for transnational corporations to be uh, basing their research and development arms, you know, perhaps their marketing arms and the, those sort of more um, sort of, again, head type, um, uh, thinking type uh, uh, procedures and, and, and uh, functions in Western countries. That's starting to make less and less sense uh, because, of course, in the Western countries, you still have a fairly high cost of living. And so you, you have to pay for those highly skilled workers. And that's okay if that's the only place you can find them. But now that China is producing more university graduates, right now that it's producing more engineers, now that India, for that matter, is producing more, I think it says in the, in the article, and this is probably an interesting hook to get you in, into the article, but in, in India, there are, the, India is producing more engineers, no, it's Asia. So India and China and, and the other Asian countries. So Asia is producing more engineers than the West, than Western Europe and North America combined. So, so it's starting to make less. And, and, and later on in the article, it mentions, look, you know, we can pay fifteen thousand dollars for an engineer, or we can pay ninety-five thousand dollars, right, for a skilled worker in Germany or something like that. So, um, so that, so that, that, that advantage that that the the, the, the West, Western countries, Canada, it mentions. The UK, certainly the United States, uh, which has been for a long time a leader right, in producing highly ed educated uh, uh, um, workers. Uh, this comparative advantage is going away. Right? And, so to, and so we might want to rethink what we're doing uh, if, if we think that this is sort of the, the future. Um, so that's, that's that article. And so uh, you'll see in there some um, questions in the quiz, right, about, well, well, certainly about all those things that I just mentioned, but also things about, you know, there's a UN survey that does a, does a, uh, it's, it's a survey of transnational corporations and asking them, where, where are you going to locate your, your research and development uh, functions of your business, right? Where's the most, you know, and, and you'll see, right, that, um, there's some people on that list, some countries on that list that you'll expect to be on that list, and others that you might not expect, or, but, but maybe you do, maybe you expect all, all the right things, but, but, you, but you might not expect. Uh, certainly not if you're using that model that, that Brown et al. is arguing against, right? this, the, the model that, you know, there's, and I've taught this model probably, right? I've been teaching this in other classes, right? I'll, I've been saying these things, right? That, look, um, you know, if you think about the core periphery, the Wallerstein sort of thing, and, and, and the core periphery functions uh, of the world economy, right? The core economy has the leading products. Also, like the, it's it's the the functions that add the most value. So think of, of of a pair of, and this is what I've been teaching elsewhere. But think of a pair of Nikes, right? And the Nikes themselves, like the actual shoes, right? We get the raw the, the the materials and you stitch them together and you form them into a shoe. That that production part, that manufacturing part, isn't where the value is added, right? I mean, you know, the the raw materials are, are, are pennies, and then the actual labor and the and the machinery that the, that the laborers use to to to, to form them. You know that costs I don't know like a dollar or two dollars per pair of shoes, right? So, so that's not where the value is being added. The value is being added in in the design probably of the shoe, right? Which is taking place uh, is it Washington or in, in the Northwest as Nike's based? Right? The design is maybe being is being done. There. The 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 
the marketing, right, which is another big uh, part of where the value comes from in terms of uh, sports, uh, sports people endorsing the product, wearing the product, you know, advertising campaigns and that sort of thing. You know, that's adding the value. That's where they cost $60 instead of like $5 a, a pair. Uh, and that's been done predominantly like perhaps in the United States, right, or in other Western countries. So, so that's the, that's, and of course the manufacturing is done in, in Southeast Asia, right? So that's the, that's the, um, that's the traditional sort of way of thinking about globalization. And so of course now, uh, if, if, if you're in America, you know, if you're, in, if you're the American government, you want to continue to produce people who are innovative in design, uh, who are, you know, sports technologists who understand, pe understand feet, understand um, running, understand sports and generally, understand what uh, the sort of the mechanical forces that go down into, in, into shoes uh, and that are played, the stresses that place on feet and legs and probably the whole body um, and how shoe design can uh, change to, to support that and, and to, to help athletes become even more competitive to give them that slight 1% um, advantage that they need. Anyway, so, so that's all those, you've got to be producing all those people and then marketing people right, who know psychology and right, consumer psychology. You need to be producing lots of those so that Nike keeps, its, keeps those value added, uh, those procedures that add a lot of value in the United States so that they don't go somewhere else. Uh, and what the article is saying is that, that that's not tenable anymore, right? Um, that's, not, that, that's, no longer, uh, that's no longer tenable. Not that the United States can't continue to produce highly educated people. That's that's not what, but it but it can't do it at a competitive rate in terms of price. Right? It can't do that more cheaply than they can do that in China, right, or in India. And so it's it's coming to a point, right, where where the competition isn't going to be okay. We will well, we'll it's the United States competing with Western Europe and and and, and, and perhaps Canada as well. I don't know, and, and perhaps Japan on sort of design and engineering and marketing and that sort of thing uh, for, 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 for products and, and, and sort of Asia, Southeast Asia in particular, competing in China and, and perhaps India as well, competing for, um, you know, who's going to be the better manufacturer. Right? You've got sort of two competitions going on, one for the head and one for the body. Well, well, more and more, we're going to be in a position where we all want to be the ones who are adding the value uh, and they're getting them who are being compensated because of that. So there, I've, got, I've got a lot of, I've gone over that paper a lot, I think. So <laughs> still read it. Uh, there's still more in there uh, for you. And again, this is my reading, but this is my interpretation. And you, you should have yours as well, uh, of course. To some extent, they've got to match up because there's a quiz. <laughs> um, se secondly, uh, but, but not, for the, not for the discussion, but for the quiz, for sure. Uh, the, again, the other reading is it's, it's from the, uh, perspective perhaps from the Islamic world uh, that, that now, now looks at this and says, okay, uh, Western style education, uh, modern education under globalization in particular is aimed at things and, and, and produces people that, that are not, not, not necessarily in harmony with the teachings of Islam, not necessarily in harmony with the, with the values in the Islamic world, and that we, we need to uh, treat it with some suspicion um, and see it for what it is, right? That it's actually this uh, sort of new neo-colonialism neo um, that benefits the West mostly, right? And so you can see the tension between the two articles, uh, which is which I think is interesting. All right, um, look at some of the things in there that that that. I think one of the interesting things in that reading where it talks about the, you know, the, the reasons behind education and, and talks about a sort of pre-modern reasons, right? That, well, pre-modern, modern, and then sort of, I don't wanna say post-modern, that's probably not quite right. Uh, sort of more materialist, more globalist third reason behind education. But the first one, right, is you know, education originally is about creating people, creating people who could live good lives, virtuous lives perhaps, and also, uh, who could even survive and, and, and live a good life in the, in the afterlife, right? Um, you know, and then it becomes perhaps more in the modern period of, of nationalism, right? It becomes 
perhaps more education with public education, it becomes more about instilling values, uh, civic values and patriotic values perhaps in the whole population of the nation. Right? And then of course, uh, giving them some skills that will allow them to serve the nation. And uh, the argument is that under globalization, uh, education is becoming much, much more aligned with um, sort of selfish motives where individuals want to uh, get material rewards, material benefits. And so the way to do that is through, through knowledge. And of course, that fits, I think, quite nicely, right, with the whole argument of that first article um, in terms of, you know, what, what are we educating people for, right? And it's, it's to make money, right? It's to, to be competitive in the global economy. Um, uh, of course, the first article does do that from sort of a national perspective rather than an individual perspective. But uh, I think the assumption in, in sort of neoliberalism, right, is that the national uh, interests uh, sort of somewhat similar or at least in harmony with individual interests, right, that the, the more money individuals make, the more entrepreneurial, the more businesses individuals set up, the, the better off the nation is as a whole. Um, so, um, so yeah, that, that's some other ways where they really sort of come together and overlap. So I hope I've set that up nicely for you. I don't want to give all of the second one away as well. And certainly like, there's more to the first one than, than I've been able to cover in this uh, period of time because I haven't just read it out to you. Um, and I've given you some of my interpretation there. So yeah, hopefully though, that again, the idea behind these videos is it gives you enough of a start so that you know what you're going into when you do the reading uh, and you have a, a frame of reference uh, as you start, and, and also so like, hey, maybe you find some things that you disagree with. Um, you know, there's certainly some things where I could have gone either way in the video on. Um, so yeah, anyway, again, uh, do the reading. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I did. I'm, I always enjoy our readings. And again, this is the last, this is the last module uh, I've made this video in, in spring 2021. Uh, and so if, if, if you're doing it in 2021, which I know the next people to watch this will be, uh, you have a little bit of extra time uh, in this uh, module, uh, which you know, given that the, the final essay is coming up, um, that should give you some time to do the, the normal uh, weekly tasks and also have a little bit of extra time for your essay as well. So I wish you the best in that. Uh, thank you very much for participating. I enjoyed uh, reading your work uh, uh, this semester, but no doubt this is an enjoyable class and, and, and students generally coming in uh, into this class and, and, and engaging properly with the work produce some interesting work that I enjoy reading and discussing. So um, thank you for that. And um, I will leave it there again for this week and look forward to grading your, your final essays.